Good morning, good morning, good morning. Ben Atkinson here, author and director of holyclubs.com. I want to take this moment sort of to push pause on our teaching through the Song of Songs and to jump straight into something that is really important. However, it fits right in where we are within the Song of Songs. Uh, chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, getting ready to go into verse 3. It's important for us to understand this principle. It's a principle of divine discipline is not God's rejection. Or another way to say it is divine discipline is not divine rejection. And we want to talk a little bit about who the Father really is. We want to talk a little bit about God disciplining his children and what that looks like. So as we go through this, the goal today is to understand the difference between rebellion and spiritual immaturity. Again, as we're going through the Song of Songs, we're talking about how she's in this place where she's been in this amazing season. It's been awesome. She's prayed in the beginning of Song of Songs, draw me away and I'll run with you. It'll be great. She got to that amazing honeymoon season where they just spent every day together. It was absolutely amazing. And then he came to her one day and said, come away with me. Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 10. He's asked her to come away and go on this journey. And she's like, ah, I can't do this. And she stayed on her bed and she went and just hid in this place. And, and she said, you're going to have to go by yourself. And he said, come to me to the cleft of the rocks. Come to me to the cross, to the place of the resurrection power. Come to me to the nations. Come. And she just became overwhelmed. She was overwhelmed because of her spiritual immaturity, not because of rebellion in her heart. And it's really important to distinguish the two. That's why I kind of want to push pause. I want to jump and go after this. And so there's going to be a lot today. You're really going to have to go back to this a few times and just kind of sit on this and meditate on this. You got to text God on each one of these verses that we're going to go through today. You got to find out who he is, what he thinks and feels about you, and then how then can you pray for those around you. So let's pray and jump right in. Father, we thank you for this time that we can grow deeper in understanding your love, go deeper in understanding who you are. As we look at divine discipline is not your rejection, God, we ask that you touch our hearts, you meet us, strengthen us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, uh, again, I am so excited to be with you today. And I'm believing the Lord to meet us today in all that we're doing. So first of all, you've got, let's look at this first phrase here. It says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 10, it says, even in your weakness. And what do we want to look at with that phrase? Well, let's look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 10. I want you right where you are to read that. I want you to just pause the video and read this. Okay, hopefully you just did this. When it speaks about how he disciplines us for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. Holiness is who God is and what he's invited us into. He's saying, I don't want you to be down here and feel as a second class citizen. Be off to the distance. I want you involved and I want you to be perfect like me. This is what he said through the Beatitudes, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. He called us into this. It was an extravagant offering of the cross. He made a way for us to become like us, like him. He said, but the point is, even in your weakness, God still enjoys you. And this was the biggest thing in my life because I thought, if I was struggling, God didn't like me. And I thought in my mind, I had to kind of be this perfect person. There's two bridges or there's two ditches on either side of the road. And one side of the ditch, I, I thought if God didn't, if I wasn't perfect, then he didn't like me. And the other side of the road is, well, if I'm, you know, the person's like, well, I can't be perfect. Therefore, I'm just going to sin and enjoy it and have a whole bunch of fun. But eventually that sin is not fun. It'll be, your sin will find you out. What's done in secret will be shouted from the rooftops. And so it, it just, I had to get in the middle and say, even though I'm struggling, you still enjoy me. And I realized I, I, at that point, I said, even in my weakness, God enjoys me. I'm a son. You're a son or daughter that is struggling with sin, not a sinner desperately trying to be a son and daughter. I am the bride of Christ 
who struggles. I'm not someone who's a sinner desperately trying to become the bride of Christ. By the grace of God, He still enjoys me even in my weakness because He has something greater for me. Delight and discipline. These two things seem to not go hand in hand, but I want us to read Proverbs chapter 3, verse 12 right here. Proverbs chapter 3. Stop right now and read Proverbs 3, 12. Okay, it says, Whom the Lord loves, He corrects just as a father and son in whom he delights. So here's the thing. You have to understand, if you're getting disciplined by God, it's because he actually he actually enjoys you because you are a child of God. And if you're a child, then you're going to discipline him. I don't discipline someone else's child. However, I will dis discipline my own child so that they will choose righteousness. I will put godly boundaries around them. In the beginning with Adam and Eve, when they sinned, God put, he disciplined them by sending them outside of the garden. Why? Because he wanted to actually save them. God wants to be with us. He desires that none would perish. Therefore, he sent his only son and if he disciplines us, it's actually because he delights in you. It's actually because he has a plan for you. It's actually because he has something more for you. Next, let's look at this where it says rebuke and reward. So I want to I look at Revelation chapter 3, verse 19 through 21. So stop right here and read that. Okay. Jesus rebukes, yet he loves believers. He says, as many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. And so he's saying, I, I love you. I'm confronting you because I actually love you. I'm confronting you because I enjoy you. I'm confronting you because I have plans for you. And then he says in verse 21, he who overcomes, I will give to sit with me on my throne. This is absolutely amazing. He comes in and says, hey, this is what needs to be taken care of. He rebukes us. And yet at the same time, he says, if you overcome, there's a reward. Why? Because he still delights in us. It's not, he hasn't rejected us and thrown us away. Remember, divine discipline is not divine rejection or God's rejection. He's disciplining us and then he rewards us. And you, look at this reward. I'm, you're going to sit on my throne? This is absolutely amazing to be able to partake of this. Maybe uh, James and John th should have maybe asked him a little bit about uh, the rewards in the age to come instead of trying to sit on his right hand and left hand. And so the point is the Lord's like, I want to reward you in all this. Next, we want to look at is dis discipline actually means that he cares. And we talked a little bit about this up here in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 12. But I want you to look at Romans chapter 1, verse 24. So stop the, the video right now and just look at that. And this might seem a little ominous, but it's actually truth. It says that God gave them over to their uncleanness and the lust of their hearts. And so if God's disciplining you, it actually means he still cares about you. If he doesn't discipline you, he means he, he's given up on you. you. You want the discipline of God in your life. It shows that he cares. It shows he's a good father. It shows he has something more for you. Therefore, we want to cooperate by the grace of God with his discipline. It shows that he cares. He's a good father. And, and, and we look at Luke chapter 15. That this is the amazing verse. He, there, it, he cared about his son. Therefore, he stayed on the porch. Therefore, it means he didn't go out in the midst of the son's sin and agree with him. He stayed on the porch. He stood there. And when he came home, when because the son repented before heaven and earth, and then we see the son coming home and the father releasing his love. The question is, well, how did, the, how did God show that he cared and there was discipline? Because in the midst of the son's brokenness, first of all, the, the son had the word that he shouldn't have gone off and done that. He, he would have known from his youth he shouldn't have lived that, that way where he wasted money. He lived in a sinful lifestyle. So God in his kindness sends a famine on the land because he's doing the least he can, least amount of discipline to get the greatest amount of turnaround in their life. Why? Because he cares. He cares about a relationship with you. So sometimes you might think things are not going as they should in your life. It might not be warfare from the enemy. 
And it may be that the Lord actually loves you. That's why I want to put big hearts by next to each one of these. Next, let's talk about God feels your pain. Isaiah 63, verse 9. I want you to read this. This is super important. I go through this as much as I can, especially when I feel like I'm having a bad day and I want to have a pity party. So read Isaiah 63, verse 9. It says, in all their affliction, he was afflicted. In his love, he redeemed them. So in, in the midst of this, what's saying is, he's a father who feels your pain. So he's not distant sitting up there going, oh, I just don't know what it's like. Poor you. It's too hard. Suck it up. No, he cares. He's gone through. He's felt the affliction. He understands. In all ways, he was tempted, yet he was out without sin. I just love that about who God is. That same spirit was inside of him, and I want to cooperate with grace. I want to cooperate with the Holy Spirit also. It says here, he suffers loss, or you will suffer loss. And I want to put in here, I want to put in when you neglect to be honestly and thoroughly confront the sin in your life, it's not you're lo you're not loved less by God, but you do suffer loss. You suffer loss in many ways. You suffer loss in the ability to experience that pleasure of that day-to-day -day relationship. When the son ran away, the father still loved him, loved him, but and he suffered the loss of that daily relationship. He suffered the loss of the learning. He suffered the loss of 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 what was going on. And so my he suffered the we suffer the loss when we discipline. We miss the revelation. We, or when we when we don't obey, we miss the different things that the Lord has for us. And and I want to say this last thing. Read Revelation chapter twenty, verse twenty one through twenty two. It says this just read it right now he gave i gave her jezebel time to repent but she actually did not i gave her time to repent of her immorality if she doesn't i'm going to cast her onto a sick bed and those who commit immorality with her those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation unless they repent page listen if god's not acting in your life while you're sinning and he's t reaching out to you and saying, stop doing that in the little things. Don't think that he's approving what you're doing. I made this mistake as a young person. Oh my gosh, I thought, well, this is a little sin. Or th and, and I guess that God doesn't care about it because kind of I didn't get caught. And you just kind of sneak around and your heart becomes callous to it. It becomes normal to sin. And that's a scary place to be. And you think, oh, well, you know, God doesn't really mind. It's okay. Guys will be guys. Gals will be gals. No! Stop sinning. God loves you. He's got so much more for you. Turn and come back to Him. His patience in dealing with you is not His approval. It's Him giving you time to repent. All right. There's a lot of stuff going on here. The big thing is divine discipline is not divine rejection. It's not God rejecting you. We want to understand the difference between rebel rebellion and spiritual immaturity. When you're in rebellion, you're running away from God. You get to the place where he may not care anymore. When you're getting disciplined, he cares. He loves you. He's trying to draw you away to obedience. So let's pray up in and out. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you that you're the loving Father who doesn't reject us when we're in our weakness. God, take us by your grace. You love us so much. Take us to that place where we overcome these little areas. Draw us away. You are amazing, God. I bless you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless. Have a wonderful day.